Video games, when used as a medium to tell a story, sometimes have a bit of a mountain to climb to do it in a convincing fashion. How often do you play a game and feel cheated on the story or feel like the characters are flatter than pancakes? If you're like me, it sometimes might irk you when a character in a game is nothing more than a boring corrugated stereotype that's not interesting at all. If that bothers you, then you're in for a treat. This is the game where even the NPCs are interesting and funny characters. This is the remake of the Sega CD classic Lunar Silver Star Story Complete on the Sony PlayStation. Alex, you're late again, silly. Were you whittling away the morning at Dines Monument again? Or were you planning more make-believe adventures with Ramus? You play as the mostly silent but strong-willed Alex, a young boy from the small villa of Berg who dreams of becoming a dragon master, who serves to protect the goddess Althena, just like his hero, the former dragon master Dine, who died 15 years ago. Nal, who is most certainly not a flying cat, often hangs out with Alex at Dine's monument on a typical day, but one day, Ramus, the big-boned son of the village elder, comes up with a crackpot scheme to get rich quick, and it's not exactly a safe one. If we hurry, we may be able to sneak in without waking the dragon. Then we can get a fantastically huge diamond from its lair worth thousands and thousands of silver, making us filthy, stinking rich, and very popular in the process! Alex's love interest, Luna, disapproves of their plan, but joins in anyway to ensure Alex's well-being. And that begins the quest that changes their lives forever. From meeting the white dragon and getting a diamond made out of his sh... Yeah, never mind. To traveling to the flying city of Vane, Alex's quest to become a Dragon Master escalates very quickly. And Luna herself is haunted by dreams and is confused about what her future might hold. What started as a quest to make some money and meet a dragon turns into an adventure to stop a plot against a man hell-bent on providing guidance for a godless world. On Alex's adventure, he will meet the overconfident prick of a magician, Nash, and the drunk womanizing swordsman, Kyle, as well as many other crazy, zany characters, including some not-so-savory types. <laughs> Lunar will spin a tale of love between Alex and Luna that will pull at the heartstrings and make you laugh occasionally, thanks in part to the fantastic localization job by the game's publisher, Working Designs, who made almost every NPC, character, and scene remarkable in some way. Lunar is a very well-done and well-developed game that engrosses you quickly and keeps you a hold for the whole ride, but it can be a bit difficult to talk about without spoiling the entire adventure. The battle system in Lunar is different from most standard RPGs. This side-view battle system isn't standard, as it combines a tactical style with a traditional turn-based system. Attackers must walk to their enemy before striking, which gives Lunar a solid sense of strategy. If your foe is on the other side of the field, you'll have to waste a whole turn walking towards him sometimes, or you could take advantage of your distance by casting a spell and not fearing an attack on yourself. Planning distances and movement is needed in most of the battles, since you can attack groups of your foes with certain attacks, or scatter yourself to avoid group strikes on your own party. While that doesn't seem strategic at first, you'll be planning which foes to attack and how to make the best use of your zone-based magic spells rather quickly. It's a fun battle system that makes every engagement different, and after 10 years of playing this game, it's still my favorite battle system. The boss battles in Lunar are also handled differently than most other games. Each boss's stats are based on Alex's level, which helps make the game a little bit more fair to people who didn't grind through the dungeons before. That doesn't mean you should fight a boss that you should fight at level 10 at level 5, mind you, but it does even out the playing field a little bit. It's an element that you don't see often in the attempt to keep players from getting too frustrated and enhances the replay value if you try to play through these games at different levels. And since you'll be eager to move the story along, the battles themselves should feel more cinematic and not exactly annoying or overly difficult. Everything else in Lunar is kind of to be expected, such as walking around towns, exploring dungeons, etc. But Lunar does feature an extremely well-detailed cast of main and supporting characters, each of which you will feel some connection with and see them develop by the end of the game in a very realistic fashion. From Nash's ego to Alex's resolve, Lunar's characters are by far the most entertaining and engaging aspect of the game, and a fun and non-monotonous battle system make for hours of solid RPG action.